Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and welcome to Hypixel Skyblock for another tutorial. And this one is a little different. Instead of uh, focusing on a single topic, I've collected 25 tips for Hypixel Skyblock progression. So, let's get right into it. Oh, before we get into the tips, you should totally download the 30 virus badline cloak link in the pinned comment and description look at that ding all right anyway let's get to the tutorial so when adding to reforge uh stones to any piece of equipment it's important to uh hold off before you recombobulate or otherwise upgrade the piece of gear for example a tactician sword with a wooden singularity a recombobulator on armor so to demonstrate i'm going to take a strong dragon helmet we're going to go into advanced reforging and as you can see applying the dragon scales reforge costs 600,000 coins at legendary rarity right so boom 600,000 coins now if we were to recombobulate the strong helmet to make it mythic and then put on the dragon scales you'll notice it costs twice as much 1.2 mil so uh make sure that when you do this, that you add the reforged stone first, because upgrading it preserves the reforge. That was a really expensive demonstration. I don't know why I did that. In the early game, it's a struggle to get your gravel collection all the way to 10,000, which is the minimum required for the critical potion. Now to uh, do that, most people use minions, but it turns out uh, lobby hopping between the spider's den and the end until you find a private lobby is the ideal way to get the collection really fast as you can see i have a flint shovel with efficiency 5 telekinesis 1 and this is not a empty lobby but if there was an empty lobby you would see every single spot filled up with flint i would say three to four empty lobbies worth of gravel should be enough to get you all the way to that collection so it's really fast would highly recommend uh, don't bother wasting a minion slot on gravel just go and do the grinding yourself it'll take maybe an hour or two it's very much worth it to get crit three potions in early game without minions just like with the flint shovel it turns out there's also a really easy way to get nether warts now again you don't need to waste a minion slot on nether wart when you could just go to the blazing fortress and go to all these spots i'm about to show and uh, get yourself a Harvesting 5 Telekinesis 1 Rookie Hill. And as you can see, there are Nether Warts all over the place. Uh, you can get, if you're lucky, a lobby like this one. Where, again, no one's been here. Everything's full. Oh, there is a guy, but he actually isn't here for these. Perfect. <laughs> but, yeah, you can get yourself all the way to Potion Affinity Artifact without actually putting down a Nether Wart minion. Let me show you all the spots just in case you don't know them. Luckily, I have an aspect at the end with a bajillion million teleports. So, the other spot is right here. Next one is... <laughs> that guy's just getting destroyed over here and there's a hidden spot not a lot of people know about and that's down here underneath and the last spot's right here and then once you've collected all the nether warts you actually can just make your way back to the beginning and then you go on the jump pad back to the spider's den and then you go back to the blazing fortress to generate a new lobby and then you could start all over again and then over and over and over again you can go for the nether warts and then before you know it, you'll have the collection done just like with the nether wart and the gravel you can actually if you have a rank you can right click on the little compass there to get a private hub lobby now this is useful because you can get uh private potatoes unharvested potatoes there's a lot of them over here i mean just there i got like almost six stacks and then in the caves over here you can get yourself some carrots basically you don't need a minion for any of these except maybe potato because there's not a heck of a lot of it but like the amount of carrots that you can get from this is more than an inventory is full of course there's another spot over there in addition to that there is a ridiculous amount of wheat there's a spot here there's a spot here three four five six uh you definitely do not need a wheat minion i would say within like 10 or 20 lobbies you will have a wheat tier 11 minion unlocked you'll even be able to get the uh, agronomy sack which is if you don't know what that is 
Uh, it's one of these it stores all of your crops i don't have one it's filling my inventory with a bunch of junk but yeah so you could use this method and of course once you've gotten everything you can select the new lobby this one has no players in it as well and everything will be fresh unharvested you can do that over and over again in place of minions to get all these collections done really quickly and without any equipment or coins so when you're in the process of crafting mastiff armor First, of course, you need to make growth armor. So if we go into here, uh-oh. So when you're in the process of crafting Mastiff armor, you have to make growth armor first. Now, before you go and do that, crafting all your Mastiff armor, it turns out if you put all of it on, you get an achievement. So to increase the efficiency of all uh, experience bottles, I would suggest that you make an experience potion first. This will make it so you get more bang for your buck. Now, obviously, you don't have to use these ridiculously expensive ingredients. I would suggest just the uh, enchanted glowstone powder, enchanted redstone powder. Uh, and then using that, you can actually increase the amount of experience you get from grand and titanic XP bottles. Now, this actually makes a huge difference. Now, we'll just, you know, we'll show what happens with the best possible experience potion with a titanic experience bottle so first let's see how much xp we get from one titanic experience bottle with no uh experience potion 237 levels all right not bad now with the experience potion 258 levels which doesn't sound like that big a difference but remember when you get up into the 200s with levels that is a ridiculous a, a difference when collecting minions make sure you have a pet equip that's the same type for free pet xp uh, it turns out this is a lot so if i were to equip my level 70 dolphin pet here and then collect my fish minion in addition to my fishing level i also leveled up the dolphin now it only gave me one level but again it's because it's like a level 70 something but it's a nice bonus especially with mining minions if you got 24 tier 11 snow minions going that's pretty much the only way to realistically level up a mining pet, trust me. So there's this cool little trick you can do with the tree capitator or a jungle axe and a sweet axe. If you were to break some logs with the tree cap and then quickly sword swap to the sweet axe, you'll get free apples. Now, why is this useful? Well, it turns out a lot of crafting recipes use apples. Well, not a lot of them. There's really a, <laughs> there's a few, all right? And one of which is lifesteal books. Now, I'm lazy, so I try and find little efficiencies everywhere. This is a really minuscule example of that. I mean, look at that. 17 apples already, 24. I mean, I have to craft saving graces on my hardcore profile, and this makes it really easy. Maybe if you run a business where you make maxed out sword books... This might be a quick way to get all the apples you need. So normally to get into here, you need to use uh, Super Boom TNT, which is 5,000 coins of pop, which doesn't sound that bad until it turns out a lot of people are trying to find a lobby that has no one in it. And if you're one of those people, it might be expensive to spend 5,000 coins every time you're entering one. So you can use a horse pet to actually glitch right through. You don't need to spend the 5,000 coins every time. And wow, I wish I got this lucky in my hardcore. What the hell? Here's another piece of advice. Do not craft pets. Seriously, don't craft pets. There are people with Taming 50 and Pet Luck potions who craft legendary pets as a money-making method. Yes, those people exist. There's always going to be somebody for every single money-making method. Anyways, it would be way more efficient of your time and coins to just buy from them because again, they're taming 50 and they have pet luck potions. They're going to get way more legendaries than you would, which means they could sell their pets at a much lower price. So yeah, instead of spending, I don't know, 50 mil on the chance to get a legendary blaze pet, just spend 60 mil on a blaze pet, you know? Trust me, it's worth it. You don't want to spend 100 mil failing to get a legendary and then upgrading it a cat for like three weeks. It's not worth at all. Here's another tip for you. Never craft growth five books. Just enchant your armor directly at level 60. It will guaranteed give you growth five and thorns three as long as you search for growth five. I use skyblock add-ons. Uh, here's that helmet from earlier. If we search up growth five and then we butterfly click here. There you go. Growth five. And it comes with thorns three every time. Turns out thorns isn't actually a bad enchantment anymore. So uh, you don't have to feel any remorse for doing that. 
Uh, but yeah, it takes like five minutes to get 60 levels. All you have to do is head to a preferably a private lobby but you know i'm just demonstrating here so it's not that important if you head over to the crypt killing crypt ghouls gets you a lot of xp so long as your sword has the is it even on here wow i don't even have experience on these swords but yeah you get levels super fast again i'm at level 191 it doesn't really look like it's going up by much but 10 kills will get you to like level 30 it is very fast so yeah never never craft growth it's not worth 16 enchanted uh dark oak just to get one piece of armor to growth five it's ridiculously expensive so when you make your way to cat and you're planning on upgrading a minion make sure you level it up first uh for example i have two skeleton pets here one level one one level 36. i, I would suggest just get it all the way to level 100 before you upgrade it because if you look right the level one is going to cost me 249,000 coins, which for a skeleton pet is really cheap. Most of the price is going into the bone, but there's other minions, for example, Endermen, which require all coins and they cost a ton to upgrade. But anyway, keep in mind that 249,250 coins, I think that's because I have Seal of the Family. Uh, as you can see, this is cheaper, 223,000. Uh, you get, I think it's a 30% uh, discount whenever you decide to upgrade a pet that already has a higher level. So, uh, long story short, just upgrade your pets or try and level up your pets before you upgrade their rarity, especially if they require coins instead of materials to upgrade. A really quick way to survive the fire trial is actually to go and grab yourself a titanic mushroom set with growth 5 on it. Uh, using the method I described before, 60 levels per piece, boom, easy growth. But anyway, uh, Titanic Mushroom Armor during the night gives you quite a lot of HP. As you can see, over 2,000. And make sure to equip a Rock Pet, preferably high level, only common is all you need. Uh, a lot of mining in the deep caverns will give you one of these. But anyway, yeah, it is extremely easy to survive the fire trial all the way up until epic rarity just with this. Now, you might need like one or two health potions for the higher levels, but it will get you all the way to the point where you can upgrade your um, campfire initiate badge to epic rarity. I think most of us know this because I've talked about it in like four or five videos, but it is really helpful but yeah you can get this guy all the way to epic i'm not gonna do that <laughs> but um if you need health potions uh chances are you probably will need at least one or two for the last trial before getting it to epic uh here's where you can get the materials alchemist as you can see they are selling glistening melon so buy a whole bunch i guess there you go then you can make enchanted glistening melon which is used to make instant health potions uh but yeah so if you need potions there's where you get the materials just put enchanted redstone enchanted glowstone in there you'll make potions powerful enough to keep you alive for epic rarity and of course if you want to get to legendary rarity you're going to need mastiff armor uh make sure you have mastiff on strong reforge as well as hurtful on as many talismans as you can find and uh try and get a sword that gives a lot of crit chance and then put spicy on it the best one in the game for that would be pigman sword but you can also use something like a shaman sword or even an aspect of the end but preferably something with a stronger reforge than that set on spicy it'll give you the most hp possible for legendary rarity so this one i'm just gonna have to explain i don't have a visual but uh to reduce the price of leveling up your alchemy with enchanted sugarcane you can actually equip any sort of alchemy pet for example a sheep and then level it up to level 100 and then immediately flip it on the auction house i would suggest a sheep because they are highly sought after for mages in dungeons uh buy yours at level one from the auction house level it up to level 100 with your cane as you're leveling your uh alchemy and then immediately resell it for probably i would say a profit of maybe 10 20 mil each probably 10 mil each if i'm gonna be honest i bet a lot of people have been doing this but anyway to further reduce the cost you can also give every potion 
an enchanted glowstone, which actually increases the, or enchanted glowstone dust, not block, don't worry. Uh, you can increase the value of all your potions that way and then sell them to the NPC to make back a bunch of your money. So yeah, cheap alchemy 50. So with the next suggestion, uh, if there's a stubborn collection that you really don't want to complete, but you have to, for example, ice is notorious for this, 250 thousand ice collection just to get the auger rod seems pretty nice but not nice enough but anyway if you do want to get it all the way to ice collection 10 i would suggest investing in some hyper catalysts they're actually fairly cheap only about forty thousand coins a piece from what i remember and if you want to unlock your collection quickly uh, just plop them in a minion you only really need one because it's basically going to turn this guy into four of himself for and if you have eight of them for uh, two days so yeah very quick way to unlock collections i would invest in doing this for all the stubborn ones uh, another one would be the farming minions but just farm manually but anyway yeah hyper catalysts are a lot more useful than people seem to give them credit for for unlocking collections and trust me it's worth it you don't want to spend three weeks grinding to get the greater backpack recipe nah just give your cow minion hyper catalyst trust me you'll be thanking me in like two days instead of three weeks blaze minions spider quartz all those other ones could use it if you're struggling with the dungeons hub races one suggestion that could help you is crafting a saddle equipping a high level horse or skeleton horse pet this one is level 64 uh give him the saddle and then if you go into, I don't know, uh, the most difficult one is Crystal Core, nothing at all race. Turns out nothing at all actually means uh, at least you can use pets. So if I go here, as you can see, this guy's pretty dang fast because he's a level 64, but the real value comes in with the saddle, which gives him an increased jump height. So let's go down here. You might remember to get to the Crystal Core, you need to jump up here so boom the saddle allows me to jump over all obstacles and beat the race in a really fast time so yeah invest in a horse pet with a saddle it'll make things so much easier for completing all your races i'm actually taking a visit to my hardcore profile where i can show you this this is a pumpkin and melon farm that I'm going to call the hybrid design. So we all know there's two camps with farming melons and pumpkins, and that's water or no water. Well, I took the compact design of a no water farm and I poked holes once every eight blocks in a grid and added water with carpet on top, as you can see right here. This is a happy medium between the two styles because most people that use water in their farms would do something like two slabs, two uh, pumpkin or melon, one slab, and then they'll put water, and then another slab, two pumpkin or melon, slab, water, slab. You waste a whole row of blocks every other row, and it adds up. You don't get as many pumpkins or melons for the amount of farm you're building. So this is way more compact, and you're only missing a pumpkin once every, I would say average of 16 blocks because some rows are not affected at all. Uh, but yeah, the hybrid design is the best one for pumpkins or melon by far. So this is another talking suggestion. So uh, one thing in Skyblock that is very important to do is to maximize what I will call your passive income. So I would say get at least 24 minion slots. I actually already made a tutorial on this. I'll leave a link in the card in the top right hand corner. Optimize your minion slot setup, get to 24 slots and then invest in snow minions or diamond spreading. Or if the market's, you know, going crazy, get yourself some minions that will make you a lot of profit, right? Uh, that isn't any new news, but I want to stress how important bank interest is. If you were to have a bank account that's been upgraded, I think it's once, then you'll get 300,000 coins every, I think it's 30 hours for free, just because you have interest, just because you have money. And then if you store at least 20 million coins in your bank, you get 300,000 coins every interest cycle. So that is really important to get uh, free money. And it turns out that's actually the equivalent of about three snow minions with enchanted lava buckets all going at the same time. So that adds up. And of course, if you go to the community center over here, 
there is a little upgrade that you can get called coin allowance which gives you a lot less but you can get it for uh free you don't have to spend any money and it's literally just free coins you can upgrade it up to tier five i think that's another fifty thousand coins so you'll go from 300,000 to 350,000 coins per day just because you have money and because you have the allowance, which is really good. Uh, another little thing you can do is to, if I were to go over here to the bazaar and then purchase a cookie, right? We get a booster cookie, we eat it. Now it's actually a money-making method because of the cookies to sit AFK on your island, yup. You sit on your island and then you collect bits and you can spend those bits on uh, little upgrades that you could then resell in the auction house. Now, it's not always going to be profit doing that because of course it costs money to get the cookie, but if you play your cards right, you purchase your cookies at the right time, then you can make some money. But of course that's passive. You just sit here and do nothing and then you basically just get free coins. Uh, also, another thing that you could do is make those little uh, cobblestone with flowing water farms with the uh, nether war crystals and uh, I think it's farming crystals. This time Dio is designed from way back in the day. Turns out that still works nowadays. And if you're going to be AFK on your island the whole time to gather up bits, might as well also be getting a whole bunch of nether war and we for no reason other than just your AFK. And to take it a step further, if there is a mob based minion that makes a whole lot of money, for example, sheep, turns out you can make a little grinder for it. So if I were to switch my profile over to my solo, you'll see a great design that I came up with for mob-based minions. Look at this monstrosity. Every piece of glass will have a minion next to it. And if you wanted to fill this with sheep minions, you could. And uh, they'll all flow into the middle, they'll die in the lava, and then all their drops will go down into the hopper system that uh, then they can be collected later. And, you know, by doing this, the minions are only expending a minion action to spawn the mobs, not kill them. So it is almost double efficiency but the thing is there is a 10 percent debuff if the minion doesn't kill the mob and it has to spawn another one so technically 1.9 times efficiency not two times efficiency but yeah uh, all those things combined makes for a whole lot of passive income oh and you know what there is one other passive income that i'll get into this is technically a different suggestion altogether you can build a massive cactus farm on your island if you wanted it's gonna lag up your island really bad but theoretically speaking with all the island upgrades and the massive amount of space on a typical island that doesn't have anything placed on it like these, this beautiful bed wars map here if there was nothing here other than cactus farm you can make 10 million coins a day selling to the npc i wish i was kidding i'm not uh, i would suggest looking up finster's video on it it's ridiculous you can actually make stupid amounts of cactus and then sell it to the npc and basically break the economy but your island will be pretty laggy just warning you and it takes a ton of work to build obviously which is why you don't see anybody doing it but it is the ultimate passive income farm so let's say you had a new sword like this rogue sword here and you wanted to max it out would not suggest doing that but if you wanted to max out something more reasonable like an aspect of the end well it's gonna take a lot of time to have to go kill crypt ghouls, go back to the enchantment table, level 60 enchant, uh, combine a bunch of books together to save anvil uses, throw it all together, spend a bunch of levels, or turns out you can go in here and look up sharp. We go into the auction house, we go to the consumable section, and we sort by bin, and then we uh, scroll down a bit because these are very expensive. Let's go to like page, I don't know. There we go. Look at this look at all of these so it turns out it's a business to craft these quote semi-god bush books i'm gonna call them demigod books so they are basically the perfect little book to throw on your sword and it's already put together with it looks like four to five anvil uses uh this one seems to have these ones up here seem to have the most enchants on it. For 445,000 coins, I can grab this massive thing. Sharpness, critical, first strike, giant killer, execute, lethality, ender slayer, cubism, everything all together. You don't even have to think about it. All I have to do now is get some grands, 
chuck them on the floor. I don't know, get like 90 levels. Rogue Sword, God Book. Ooh, it's 177 levels. It is cheaper to apply the one book than it would be to go nuts with making a bajillion of them. Boom. Now we have a maxed out rogue sword for whatever reason. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it is a business for people to make these god books. It is going to be difficult to get the levels. Maybe it'd be a good idea to get a titanic. But uh, if you're lazy and you want to enchant your weapon really quickly, there's a business out there for that. <laughs> So yeah, save some time if you got the coins for it. Obviously, if you want to craft it yourself, you're going to save some money. But, you know, if you're someone like me with 78 million coins in their purse, it barely matters. Oh, here's another talking point because there's no spooky festival going on right now. But if you want to get yourself a private spider's den lobby for the purpose I said before with getting your crit recipe, then all you got to do, and same goes for end lobbies as well. If there's a spooky festival going on, don't leave the lobby when the event ends. Most people are going to leave because they want to go to the auction house or bazaar to sell all the stuff they got. Well, if you stay in the lobby, chances are it's going to become a private lobby. Now, private lobbies are especially valuable in the end because if you can imagine, right, you go to the dragon's nest in a private end lobby. Imagine no sweats running around killing the zealots. You get them all to yourself. You can get theoretically like 20, 30 summoning eyes from one lobby if you're prepared for it. And if you're in a spider's den lobby, you can get uh, your crit potion recipe. You can farm for brood mother spawns to get a luxurious spool or a spider talisman. But uh, yeah, private end lobbies are extremely valuable. And just sitting in one after a uh, spooky festival is done, you might be able to get one. They're pretty hard to find, though. There might be other people in your lobby trying to do the same thing, so that might ruin it. But uh, you could get lucky. Honestly, that's the best way to do it. I don't think there's much... If you were to randomly search for a private end lobby, you'd probably never find one. But just after a spooky event, maybe. Oh, here's another weird one. Turns out, uh, during the Season of Jerry event, there's a lot of magma cubes. And they chuck fireballs at you. And they do tons of knockback. There's actually a way to get around that. All you gotta do is sit on a horse or a rock pet. And with the horse, you have the added uh, mobility, which is nice. But uh, yeah, you don't take knockback while sitting on a pet. So a season of Jerry event, don't wanna take knockback, sit on a pet. Or you can go on those cannon things. But this is, you know, you get to stay on the ground and not get knocked all over the place. One thing that's special about a uh, bad line client is this little feature called the waypoints mod. Now, if you enable waypoints, there's actually a great little system that I've set up on my profile here that will map out the location of every fairy soul in the game. Now, uh, it's not updated for the hub, the new hub yet, but let's ignore that. But yeah, most of the hub souls uh, and all the souls in the other locations, you can actually pinpoint their exact location. And instead of referring to a video and, you know, fidgeting around for three hours to get all the fairy souls you can get every single one in the game theoretically in less than an hour me and fezzy proved this in our uh lemon let's play of hypixel skyblock we use this system yeah so bad bad line waypoints mod extremely useful i actually made a video on how to download and install my waypoints in bad line so i'd suggest clicking on that video in the top right hand corner in the uh, cards but yeah extremely useful what are you what are you trying to do if you're having trouble leveling up your obsidian collection you can go to the end and you can kill obsidian defenders to get very quick uh obsidian collection so if we were to wait in typically this line right here especially this back segment there are a lot of obsidian defenders now i can't one shot for some reason i think that's because my crit chance is too low but yeah get 100 percent crit chance you can uh kill the obsidian defenders as you can see i got 35 obsidian it's way faster than just manually mining obsidian or using a minion you could do this for i don't know uh five six hours and you'll get the you'll get everything you'll need like a tree capitator for example i did this on my hardcore profile and you might as a bonus get an obby chest plate which is really good for speed and it will make it 
easier to get more kills on obby defenders but yeah farming these guys is actually pretty great if you don't have the money for obby or you just want to get your ender chest size up to the maximum that's one of the most common reasons why people farm obsidian defenders all right so this is the last point in the video and it's actually another talking point so whenever the game updates sell everything to do with that update as soon as you get it no exceptions immediately sell 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 because people are stupid <laughs> people are dumb and they will pay whatever it takes to get the update items first now you as a smart entrepreneurial type of player will realize hey this value is probably going to be like one tenth the price it is now in about a week so what if i optimized how quickly i can get these items and immediately sold it on the auction house or bazaar before the price tanked sometimes it takes 10 minutes for the price to tank. Other times it takes like several hours. Uh, for example, with the mythological event, the price of griffin feathers and let me see if we go over here, mythological event. Yeah, griffin feathers were almost 600K a piece and now they're down to one sixth of that. The ancient claw was worth about 30,000 coins each now they're 1000 coins each just be smart with updates don't buy update items on day one wait until the price levels off and people know how rare they are and if you want to make some money on the side take advantage of people being stupid and immediately buying update items and just throw things on the bazaar or even the auction house and people will overpay massively well anyway uh, that's it for this tutorial guys. This is an hour long recording for one video. My god um, But yeah, this has been 25 Tips for progression in high pixel skyblock I hope you enjoyed and benefited from at least half of these even the most seasoned of skyblock players probably haven't heard of I would say at least a third like, if you've been playing this game since release, I still bet you there's a third of these things you didn't even know. So, anyway, uh, yeah, I guess that, that's it. Again, if you want to walk around with style, you can get yourself the 30 virus bad lying cloak. Link in the pinned comment and description. And, uh, might as well do that on your way to getting the waypoints mod to get all your fairy souls. Well, anyway, I guess that's it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.